Excuse me. Yes. I telephoned earlier about a room. Oh, yes. Was there a name, sir? Rainbird. John Rainbird. Rainbird. I spoke to a lady. Well, that's funny. She never told me anything about it. Have you got a room? Oh, aye. There's plenty of room, sir. Uh, how long was it for, sir? Oh, not long. Oh, I see. Yes, sir. Uh, well, you better have room 404, sir. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Chapter 10, in which Bob Partridge sees a ghost and Frank Allardyce sees reason to doubt it. A gibbous moon hung suspended like a carnival balloon over the old grey quadrangle at St. Aubrey's as Bob Partridge crept from his warm bed in the senior dorm. I don't know why she bothers. He did open his eyes in July. I don't know why they don't just let him go. I mean, if you go jumping out of some window, you don't want a lot of people keeping you alive for months afterwards, do you? I wonder what goes on inside his head, though. Nothing. Oh, he might dream or something. Well, I shouldn't think so. Something piscatorial was afoot. There was little doubt of that. But Bob allowed himself to forget the fishiness of Allardyce's behavior as he held his breath and tried desperately to make himself invisible.
choice of music. On BBC One, Ferdy and Isabel, a musical that takes a light-hearted look at the Spanish Inquisition. By George, I enjoyed that. Very nice. Well done, too. Well thought out, nicely photographed. It's marvellous how they get some of these films. Pity they don't have more of them, instead of all that sex and stuff. Oh, I hate all that. Oh, it's just disgusting. Where did sex ever get anyone? All fair in love and war, you know. What do you think of it, Johnny? Oh, I don't know. What do you mean, you don't know? That's what you ought to be doing, my lad. That's a man's life, that is. Oh, yes. Doing what? All that. You know. Killing people for a living. Perhaps he likes working at the pet shop. He's always been a bit funny. Always been a bit funny. A bit funny. Perhaps he likes working at the pet, pet shop. shop. It's not like that anymore, Dad, anyway. No, I've seen the advert. Nowadays it's all rockets and fallouts and spraying each other with germs. Where's your satisfaction in that? It's not all like that. Don't be such a sports book. I'm only endeavouring to point out the facts of... So soft nowadays. But it's not all like that. You saw the film. The flamethrowers were all right. Ah, the flamethrowers, I grant you. Not living in the Middle Ages. More's the pity, say I. That's as maybe. But this is the age of your technological revolution. If you can't beat them, join them. Why can't he join the Air Force? I'm all right at the pet shop. I like the pet shop. We can't all do what we like in this world, my son, or else where would we end up, eh? The Air Force has its own appeal, you know. Dropping bombs on them. You can get dozens at a time that way. Hundreds even. Thousands. <laughs> well, of course, I'm only a woman. But I should have thought it's a funny sort of man who could get his satisfaction out of pressing a button. Yes, it is a spiritual problem. Of course, we don't do it anymore at all. We used to go for it quite a lot. In the old days, when we had real spiritual authority. We used to burn them, mainly. Witches, heretics, unbelievers, oh, almost anybody. You can't do that now. Now it's all sewing circles and dolloping out soup for the underprivileged. That's not much of a life for a man, is it? No. No, it isn't. Look out! It's 14 months since your son's accident, Mrs. Rainbird. I can't honestly hold out any hope of further improvement. He opened his eyes in July. But not since. His eyelids flicker sometimes. I sit for hours watching them. They flicker as though they were about to open. Yes, and he may open them again, but you mustn't read too much into that. The brain is irreparably damaged. I can't just give him up. No. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not suggesting that. my son along. He's thinking of joining your army. Well, 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 well. That's the sort of talk I like to hear. How old are you, lad? Twenty-five. 
Left it a bit late, haven't you? It got held up in the cat food business. Well, better late than never, I suppose. Seen the advertisements, have you? Yes, I've seen those. We <coughs> don't go much on those advertisements. Don't go much on the advertisements? Oh, what do you mean? You don't go much on the advertisements. The works of art, that's what they are. Look at these posters. It's a man's life in the army of today. That one's all right, I suppose. I love these advertisements, you know. The meat and drink to me. They have these very brainy fellas thinking them up special, you know. I sometimes have an idea of my own that I jot down and send off. They send me very nice letters back, but, well, the brainier than I am, aren't they? Look at this one, for instance. Bill Brundy's All at Sea. Now, a fictional character, you understand, but designed to demonstrate the amphibious nature of some of the modern army's tasks. He joined the Navy, if that's what he was after. Yes. Yes, I, I, I see what you mean. How about this one, though? Join the army and see the world. That's more in the nature of a joke, isn't it? Instead of join the Navy and see the world, join the... I don't think it's a joking matter. No. No, you may be right. I mean, uh, I can't vouch for the contents of all of them, of course. How about this one, then? No trace of humor here, I think you'd agree. The digital computer's no mystery to Ken Perry. It's another imaginary character, you see. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Oh, no, I don't like that. He doesn't like it either. Oh, I don't mind it. What don't you like about it? It's all of them. They're all the same. It's all rockets and technology and having a good time. And you don't like that? No, I don't. But they're nice. Look at them. Homely, smiling faces. Those lovely teeth they've all got, all doing those nice jobs. What more do you want? He wants to kill people. Kill? Kill people! Kill people! No, you know! Kill people properly! Like this! Oh, oh, no, then! Oh, no, then! Oh, oh, please, oh, sir! Oh, stop oh, it! Oh, oh, stop it! You're living in the dark ages, sir. We've done away with all that long since. Done away with it? I told you, Dad. We're not like that anymore. Well, what use are you then? Use? Use? We're soldiers of the Queen. But you kill people, don't you? No, certainly not. Never. But you must do sometimes. Well, some of them have. A long time ago, some of them did. They used to do that, but not me. And anyway, not just like that. Not like he just did. You just press a button nowadays. You never see them or anything. It's all hygienic. But that's no good. Well, it'll just have to do, that's all. If you're not going to be satisfied in killing in the modern manner, I suggest you just go home and think again. We will. We will. That's just what we will do. Come on, John. There's a weird one, if you like, sir. Wants his son to go around killing people. Oh, yes? Bloodlust. That's what it was, sir. Naked bloodlust. Frightening it was to see, sir, to one brought up as I was. But I told him straight, sir, we've done away with all that, I said. It's 
not much of a life for a man, is it? No. No, it isn't. I'm back. Jolly good. Would you care for a drink? I had dinner over an hour ago. Would you like a brandy? I shan't get any sleep again if I have brandy at this time of night. It's cold in here. Why didn't you put the fire on? Nothing at all. I've been at the hospital all day. Oh, I know. I know that. You haven't asked me how John is. John. John, 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 John. You don't have to feel guilty, Edward. I do not feel guilty. I think in some curious way you do. Will you please allow me to know what I do and what I do not feel? What John did, he did. There's no need for either of us to feel the slightest sense of responsibility. That's all I said.
I like the way you're rearing this lad, Mrs. Rainbird. We've always done our best from God knows. Not that we expect any gratitude. Oh, get it. There's far too many parents nowadays take no interest in their children. Oh, we've always been interested in him. He's got no go in him, that's the trouble. Never got into fights at school. The press took it up once it got so bad. Not like his father. <laughs> <laughs> Proper little scrapper in my day, I was. <laughs> but he's good material, your son. Oh, material. Yes. That sort of upbringing rubs off on a lad. It's there somewhere. He could be the sort of lad we need. Just can't seem to get up ahead of steam somehow. Though genetically speaking, he should be all right. With his genes being the way they are and his upbringing. Look at our father. Proper little scrapper in his day, he was. Oh, yes? Took on 53 matabilis at Spy and Cop and lived to tell the tale. Black as the ace of spades they were, as they first appeared against a lightning sky on the adjacent hill, shaking their ashy eyes <laughs> and giving vent to shrieks and war cries that would have curdled the blood racing through the stoutest heart. At the first volley, he began to lose height, oily black smoke belching from his engine. But so intent was I on my quarry that I failed to notice the little crimson Fokker triplane with a dreaded Maltese cross insignia coming at me out of the sun. Desperately, I tried to pull him out of the vile ooze. But the tank was almost upon us, and I was forced to abandon him, or we'd both have perished. Dragging a mill's bomb from my pouch, I wrenched out the pin and hurled it into the observer's turret. Dive! 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 I ordered as I watched the bubbling tracks of our last clutch of torpedoes racing towards the tanker's bow. Isn't it exciting? That's not much of a life for a man, is it? Yes! Yes, it is! Dive! 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 Have a look. Yes, I know what you're going to say, and it can't be done. Indeed. Why not? Look, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to tell you your own job, but can you avoid damage to the Pons Verolii? That's the least of our problems. We cut low enough to avoid it altogether. Now, the real question is just whether or not he's fit enough to take the operation. Oh, he's fit enough. You lose a lot of motor activity, of course. Will he? Oh, yes. That is, if he pulls through at all. I tell it not in Gath. This might be what our friends in the press would call experimental surgery. Oh. So, in many ways, he might still be a vegetable. A conscious vegetable, though. And after all, how much more the majority of people well, what about the human element? I have to get the mother's consent. Is she the next kid? Well, there is a father, but we don't see much of him. It might be better to approach him then. Yes, it might. Why not get the padre to approach them first? Nothing like sticking in a bit of the old religion before we stick in the old knife.
You want the lad to kill people, do you? Yes, sir. That's right. My God, sir, I like your spirit. Anyone could do that. Just looks bloody silly. Whom do you want him to kill? Well, foreigners, I suppose, mainly, sir. But I'm not bothered. It's not just neurotic, then? Oh, no, sir. I mean, what I really want him to do is to kill people in a good cause. Nicely photographed? What more do you want? I despair of him, sir. I despair of him sometimes. You'd need a knife to get some spirit into him. I think it's time he was tested. 
tested. It's time he was tested. Tested. It's time he was tested. Tested. No. No, I don't think so. Don't decide now. Think about it. Talk to your husband. It's too much of a risk. We've no right to risk his life. I think we have, if the other side of the risk is that he regains consciousness. That means he'd not only be helpless, he'd know he was helpless. Please think about it. You may be giving your son at least some sort of life. No. I'm sorry. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Good morning, John. Chapter 12 in which a SWAT is severely chastised and Dr. Mullet sees celestial bodies. The wild cheer that rose from the playing field afforded little pleasure to the delicate ear of Jack Browning. Likely though it seemed that it boded well for the St. Aubrey's Eleven in their grim annual battle against St. Asaph's. But why consult me at all? I mean, the church has got no attitude in the matter, as far as I know. I'll check on this, but I don't think so. The only slight difficulty in this case is that the recipient is unconscious, and likely to remain unconscious. Yes. Mm. So we have to get permission mm. from the next of kin, which in this case is the father or the mother. Sir. You mean you want me to use my powers of persuasion? <laughs> no, well, uh, it's not really a question of persuasion. I, I mean, we wouldn't want her to do anything that was against her will. Look, the subject has been mooted. We've broken the ground for you. And how did she take it? Oh, she's considering it. For Jack Brown... But Jack Browning was not playing with his accustomed flair and dash in the St. Aubrey's forward line. Indeed, Jack Browning was not playing at all. Jack Browning was in detention again. And ask for more? Doesn't look very strong. Strong? He took on 53 Machabeles at Spy and Cop. But did he live to tell the tale? And he lived to tell the tale. His left hook is a horizon, and his right is a, a meteorological freak. He's very skinny. Looks as if he could do with a good feeding oh. up to me. You've got to see this boy in action before you can judge. Well, let's see him then. Come on, lad. Show him your metal. Ah. 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 Ah.
What about that for class and style? Oh, it's all right. But has he got a real bayonet? Have you got a real bayonet? Oh! There you are, you see. I'm gonna get one one day. When they allow me to. What about your boy, Captain Purser? This is no boy, ma'am. This is a man. Invincible, as you can see. Invincible to any attack by puny bayonet. Invincible to broadsword, cutlass, battle axe, bowie knife, or dagger. Invincible to mace, musket, matchlock, or machine gun. Invincible to tomahawk, trench mortar, and most especially, to tear gas. Anything else? Anything you care to name, ma'am? Simita? Yes. Siege gun? Of course. Small arms? Naturally. Can we see them in action? By all means. Of course, you realize that in this instance, words speak louder than actions. The pen is mightier than the sword. Of course. Why? Because he's bigger than you are, that's why. Can we see him in action? Four things greater than all things are. Women and horses and power and war. Oh, that's very good. Massive, so well done. But it's not fair. All's fair in love and war, you know. I can't stand a snibbler, you know. Time for the way in, you know. Time for the way in. Step up on the scales, please. A fantastic weight. An incredible weight. <laughs> Step up on the scales, please. He weighs nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Just as I thought. That's not much of a life for a man, is it? No. No, it isn't. Dive! 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 <laughs> possibly spare a moment to talk to the Padre? The Padre? Well, I'll just read to John for a while well, first. He's awfully sorry, but he's got to be at St. Stephen's in half an hour and... Oh, all right. A few more minutes won't make all that difference, I suppose. I like to keep to a regular timetable with John. I don't know why. I somehow feel it's important. Mrs. Rainbird. Good morning. Good morning. I'm afraid I take the opportunity of using this as a sort of unofficial office whenever I can. It's so lovely out here. It is nice. It's so quiet. One might be in the heart of the country. Let's listen. Not a sound, is he? One can just hear the hum of traffic from the bypass. Yes. Yes, if one strains one's ears, one can, I suppose. <laughs> However, I don't imagine you got me out here to listen to the traffic. Uh, no, indeed. I think I can imagine why you did, as a matter of fact. Oh? It's about the operation, isn't it? The operation? No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I... I don't understand. I, I just felt that we should get better acquainted, and uh, 
I must say, I think we ought to talk about your future. In what way? Uh, don't misunderstand me, Mrs. Rainbow. It's most praiseworthy of you to devote this time to your son, but uh, you mustn't sacrifice yourself, Mrs. No Rainbow. No sacrifice, Mr. Taylor. No, I'm sorry. I express myself badly. John is all I've got left, you see. Ah. Now, that's exactly the thought I want you to examine. This must be a very tense time for you, sir. Yes. What's the hold-up exactly, sir? Next of kin. They seem to think you're doing it. Just for the fun of it. Well, jolly good luck anyway, sir. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes. I'm afraid, though, that the third deadly sin stirs in my breast at the sight of it. The third? I'm afraid I don't know which one that is. Envy? Ah. The vicarage is only half a mile away. The garden is pure chalk. Uh. Well, oh dear. Look at the time. Now, do think of what I said to you. Outside interests, a new start. Of course. Goodbye, Mr. Taylor. You're a very brave woman, Mrs. Rainbow. Goodbye. Uh, Mrs. Rainbow? What was it you thought I wanted to talk to you about? An operation. I don't want to take up your time. No, no. What else am I here for? Would you like to tell me about it? Could it have been an accident? What's the good of always asking that? No, it couldn't. So you say. He only took a room in an hotel to do it. There was no other reason for him to take a room in an hotel. He couldn't accidentally fall out that window anyhow. He had guts. Someone with guts doesn't do a thing like that. He was more complicated than that. You're always on about how complicated he was, how sensitive he was. Well, he was. Of course he was. We all are. That doesn't mean to say... You were always too soft with him. That was part of the trouble. Well, what are we going to do? It's too dangerous. You've said no anyway, haven't you? Yes. Yes, I have. But surely it'd be better for him to be at least conscious. Conscious and helpless as opposed to unconscious and helpless? Doesn't seem much of a choice to me. Just your usual signature, Mrs. Rainbird. That's it. Thank you. Good. Good. Come on, lad. 
Take it like a man. Take it like a man. But I'm not a man. Of course you are. Why have you done this to me? There are certain tests. We'll be late for the inauguration next. That will be the next. I don't want to go to the inauguration. I don't you want can't to play here all night. Yes, I can. I can if I want to. Tests that you have failed. Take it like a man. I don't want to take it like a man. I want to kill him. I want to kill him. <laughs> I think he's wonderful. Really, I do. Can I tell him? He can't answer, you know. I just want to tell him. Very well. <coughs> I think you're jolly wonderful, Father. Really, I do. enhanced and ancient custom, the elected is not allowed to speak, except in private, and then only on very peculiar matters. I have been designated his speaker man, and this is the message I have been given for you. <laughs> These are the orders of the elected. From now on, there will be nothing but good. The production index will be good. The weather will be good. The standard of living will be prodigious. <laughs> but at the same time, retain a certain elegant simplicity. Trade figures will give a quiet glow of satisfaction to all. These are the orders of the elected. Babies will be fatter and more cheerful. Clothes will fit better. Cars will start more easily. Only a small number of selected volunteers will be allowed to die and none to cry. There will be no more tears except of joy. <laughs> there is but one fly in the ointment, one rat in the granary, one blackamoor in the woodpile, that so called John Rainbird. You will be dealt with. You will see how we will deal with them. We will show you how we deal with the John Rainbirds of this world and others of the same kidney! opened his eyes. It wasn't nothing. Just a... He hasn't done that for months. Just the movement, I expect. He has been moved before, you know. Fine boy. Fine boy. He never... We were real pals. He was never... Oh, I don't know. Sounds a lot of nonsense, doesn't it? No, go on. He never... He seemed to go back into him. So the older he grew, never... She was too soft with him. That was the trouble. Maul was babying him. Ah. Uh, Didums hurtums naughty knee, then. Do 
that all the time, the boy will never get on. But will learn to... Don't you know, she'd say you ought to be more manly. When we hear her say it. Be more manly, she'd say. There she was, making a baby of him all the time. Of course, that's what she wanted, really. It's the only time she ever enjoyed him. It was just a little baby, lying there, helpless. Lying there, helpless with her doing everything for him. What? What's wrong? Ready? He's on the table. Mr. Buckingham with him? Yes, sir. He opened his eyes as we were coming along the corridor. Opened his eyes? It's probably just the unaccustomed movement. Mm. Very likely. This won't hurt because... You're dead already. Just relax and breathe deeply. Knife. Fork. I'm going to eat you now. Operation a success, sir. Complete success. Uh, manners.
invincible because we have robbed him of his invincibility. Invincible to base, musket, matchlock, or machine gun. Invincible to tomahawk, trench mortar, and most especially to tear gas. Anything else? Most especially to tear gas. Anything else? Most especially to tear gas. There. There's a good boy. Oh, you're dribbling. Good boy. Well done. And another. Whoops. <laughs> That's my boy. And another. Little smile. Ah. Uh -huh. 